welcome to Busan, the second largest city in Korea and one of the top places to visit in the country. I'm gonna spend two full days here, so let's go have a look around and see what Busan has got to offer. Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Today we are exploring the city and surroundings of Busan, a large metropolitan area on the southern coast of the Korean peninsula. We are currently in the Someon area, one of the busiest neighborhoods in central Busan. Before we start exploring, let me give you some background info. The region of modern-day Busan was part of various kingdoms throughout its history. In 1876, Busan became Korea's first international port and the city has remained a strategic trading center ever since. During the Korean War, Busan was one of only two major cities that the North Korean army didn't capture. As such, it acted as the de facto capital of the Republic of Korea. The metropolis modernized rapidly throughout the 20th century and is today a major industrial hotspot boasting the sixth largest port on the planet. Besides heavy industries, Busan is also a hub for science, education and tourism. We are now walking the streets of Someon, one of Busan's liveliest neighborhoods. You'll find plenty of fashion stores, restaurants, bars and coffee shops here. Someon also has a traditional market with food stalls that serve local dishes for reasonable prices. Apart from shopping and food, there is some pretty interesting street art here, including the Busan Li Jungsop Street, which has artistically adorned stairs leading up to a panoramic viewpoint. Stop number two on our Busan itinerary is one of the city's most picturesque locations, Gamcheon Culture Village. This small district was first built in the 1920s and initially intended to house working-class families. The original dwellings were made out of wood and the area was highly impoverished throughout the 20th century. In the 2000s, however, local authorities realized the village's tourism potential and they launched massive renovation projects. Today, the area's twisted alleyways and colorful houses are a magnet for visitors and locals alike. On my way to the next location, I stopped at a local eatery to get some lunch. I had some spicy crispy chicken with cheese that tasted a bit like schnitzel. I then went to check out Songdo Beach. Open since 1913, it is one of Busan's oldest man-made beaches. You'll find plenty of activities here, including the Busan Air Cruise cable cars. I was a bit short on time, so I opted to walk on the Songdo Cloud Trails. The Cloud Trails or Songdo Air Walk are a series of bridges completed in 2015. 
They are 365 meters long and you'll find various viewpoints here, including an island with statues. These ones represent a local legend about the love story between a fisherman and the daughter of a sea dragon. To end our first day here in Busan, let's do a speedy accommodation tour. Hotels are a lot cheaper in Busan than in Seoul and I found this really nice modern room in the Sameon neighborhood for 40 euros per night. It was clean, comfortable and even had a large bathtub. Overall, a pretty sweet deal. I started my second day in Busan with some delicious spicy wheat noodles. They had this handy machine to order and the meal only cost 8,000 won. After breakfast, it was time to head to the next location by metro. Busan has an extensive underground rail network that covers the city and the surrounding region. You can buy single journeys in cash or get a rechargeable card. And the fare depends on how far you go. I traveled all the way to Jiangsan, the last station on line 2, 17 stops from Somyeon. From there I hopped on a minivan to get to my destination, the Blue Line Park Beach Train. The van dropped me off at a place called Chongsapu, a small beachside town with a port and lighthouse. It is here where I took the famous Busan beach train. Two trains are running along the coastal track, the vintage beach train and a smaller sky capsule. The latter only holds four people and the ticket is much more expensive than the bigger train. As I was by myself, I decided to go for the classic beach train and rode two stops down to Mipo station. The original train opened in 1935 and connected various cities along the southern coast. Today it is a tourist attraction with gorgeous views along the shoreline. There are also plenty of hiking trails in this part of Busan. From Mipo station, I walked down the streets of Hyundai, an ultra-modern, fancy-looking neighborhood. The area is home to numerous restaurants, shopping malls, luxury hotels and of course Hyundai Beach. This is one of the most popular beaches in Busan with water sports and sunbathing. You'll also find the Busan Sea Life Aquarium here. As our time in the city is coming to an end, let me give you some travel tips and also my thoughts on Busan. What I love about this city is that it is quite a versatile travel destination. Apart from beaches and cool neighborhoods, there are also plenty of cultural sites that I didn't have time to cover in the video. The city also has a very unique charm as a result of its mixed heritage. As such, the industrial flair is omnipresent, but the city also feels young and hip. Busan certainly isn't overrated and it is a mandatory inclusion on any South Korea itinerary. Two days is enough to get a taste, but I would recommend at least three days if you want to spend some time chilling on the beach. In terms of accommodation, I was quite satisfied with the Someon area as it is located right in the middle of the city. Busan is relatively spread out, so staying in a strategic location on one of the main metro lines is a good idea. 
As an alternative to Someon, you could also stay close to Busan station. There is no bad time to visit Busan as each season has advantages and drawbacks as well. I visited in early September, which is the shoulder season. It was pretty hot, but not scorching, and there was a bit of rain. Here is a more detailed explanation of Busan's climate. I ended my second day in Busan with some mouth-watering Korean barbecue. Together with two German friends, I spent a bit of time looking around Somion, but most of the barbecue restaurants had waiting times of up to one and a half hours. Luckily, we found a small, more local place that wasn't full. The barbecue was amazing, and even though none of the staff spoke any English, we managed to order a mix of pork and beef with some sides. It was delicious and undoubtedly one of the best culinary experiences I had in Korea. And that is it for today. As always, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one. Goodbye.